all right guys uh, continue the lecture from here so we first of all discuss the uh, sri lankan economic crisis we discuss some of the factors that indicate that there is you know economic crisis going on in a country uh, which which was going on in sri lanka since 2019 then we discuss the reasons for those factors that are representing the economic crisis so after doing all of these things let's move on to the reasons why pakistan is going on sri lanka's track and pace as well so now we thoroughly discuss sri lanka's case and now we're going to discuss that why pakistan is also going on sri lanka's track and pace now there are different reasons for it i'm going to start off with this under severe debt everyone knows that pakistan is under severe debt domestic loans as well as foreign borrowing so there are domestically they are in debt as well and also they have foreign debt that they need to pay as well so economy economies to expand slowly by 3.5% which means that the growth in the economy has been decreased whereas the domestic loans and foreign borrowings have increased which is resulting in ultimate severe debt right total external debt thus usd 88.8 billion can you can you imagine that the total external debt that we have has touched usd 88.8 billion and with that we know that how much you know our currency is devalued how much you know the exchange rate has been the difference has been so much in the exchange rate that we need to also check about that that what's going on in that in such circumstances where the dollar rate is going high and we still don't know what to do when the growth rate is so less there are domestic loans there are foreign borrowings that is going on so we need to see what we're supposed to do thus what happens is usually that when you grow in an economy and even if you take help or debt from some someone or some country you pay off their debts by your growth right but in this case what's happening no growth or the growth is very less it's 3.4% it's it's expanding very slowly while the domestic loans and foreign borrowings the debt is uh, you know it's increasing tremendously so that's one of the biggest reasons why pakistan is going on sri lanka's track and pace all right so the next reason is restrictions on free trade right so there is you know what free trade is when there are no barriers to stop the trade between different countries right which means like tariffs co- you know quotas and all these things are not there but when there are restrictions of free trade there me- that means that you know there are such things as tariffs as taxes as you know uh, the quantity that has been restricted for trade so that refers to the concept of free trade which makes it makes it impossible to you know have the trade on the same pace that was that used to help previously so that's a, another problem that's causing pakistan to go on sri lanka's track and pace why i'm saying this is because you know uh, we can say that there are bans on goods from india and israel right so there are bans that are being there on goods from india and israel maybe you know some goods that we can go, get at a cheaper rate but now since there there aren't any uh, you know free trade going on there are restrictions there are bans on goods from india as well as israel then there are negative list of products that is banned on religious environmental security and health grounds again on religious grounds no this is against the religion we can't purchase this we can't purchase this we need to you know we can't uh, call this from another country and all so this is something that uh, you know maybe because our religion is different for example if we are asking we uh, want something from india but we are unable to get it why because there is a ban on uh you know there is a ban on those things due to religion due to environmental factors that maybe it's go- it's going to cause a lot of pollution maybe due to security maybe due to health grounds that this is not feasible so all of these things they are constituting to what restrictions on free trade and ultimately is causing pakistan to go on sri lanka's track and pace because now maybe you know uh pakistan they, they don't have these goods cheaper from other countries and if they are going to make it themselves it's going to cost them a lot of money a lot of resources a lot of research and development and that is another very important uh, reason that is being there right then we have import dependence on essential commodities so import markets include saudi arabia kuwait japan us germany and the uk so there are different countries from where we are importing and when we are depending upon importing imports that means that you know even in our our country we are not generating any employment opportunities because we know that okay we don't need to make these products we're going to get it from other uh, countries so that's another very crucial factor and something that we need should we need to ponder over 
that import markets are in, including these different countries that I just named uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Japan, US, Germany, UK, all of these. These are basically making it difficult for Pakistan to grow as a whole because they know they are dependent upon other countries. They'll get the products and now products are at a, at a higher rate because tariffs are increasing. Everything is increases just to discourage trade. But ultimately what's happening? We're dependent, we're dependent, dependent upon imports so much that we're not promoting our industries. We're not doing growth in our country. We're not opening growth opportunities. We're not creating employment for the people who have studied so hard, but they're just roaming around here and they're searching for jobs, right? So uh, in recent years, Pakistan has witnessed a substantial increase in the value of imports, which means that, you know, the value of imports has increased so much you know, in comparison to the value of exports that we're not, we're not basically uh, exporting much. We're not, you know, earning foreign ex foreign reserves, foreign exchange from other countries because our exports are low and our imports are very high. So this is another very important problem, which we can just, you know, in together, in together, we can say import dependence on essential commodities. I hope this is also clear to everyone. Moving on, we have Russia-Ukraine war. So we know Russia-Ukraine war is there, uh, which has resulted in record surge in LNG rates, liquid-fired natural gas rates. So there's increased natural gas rates that you have, and if you want to purchase that gas, you need to pay high, uh, you know, bills, expenses. You are compelled to purchase expensive LNG. Just as I told you, we all know how. We all know what's going on will face frequent and prolonged power outrages. When we are not having natural gas in access, we're not having these gas, you know, power, basically their energy. So, which means that we don't have power. We're not making power. We're not creating energy. We're not creating electricity. I'm talking about uh, Sri Lanka at that time, but same is going with us as well, right? We need to purchase expensive LNG now. So, we don't, we don't know how we are going to overcome our power sh shortages. And this is what's causing us to face frequent and prolonged power outrages. We're going to face a lot of, uh, you know, load shedding, a lot of these things that are going on in our co uh, country. And this is what you're seeing. This was something that was happening in Sri Lanka as well, right? Next, we have heavy involvement of China in investment projects. So investment valued at 47 billion. Pakistan base exports of the horticultural commodities to China are low. USD 49 million for fruits and only USD 1.5 million for vegetables. No, so China has invested so much money in Pakistan, right? They have invested valued at 47 billion and there was the project, uh, you know, uh, CPAC as well that they had, remember? So they were trying to invest in Pakistan in order to facilitate them to grow and to, you know, provide them with exports. Uh, so that they can use our resources as well while we're going to use their funds. So Pakistan base exports of horticulture commodities to China are still low. China wanted us to facilitate them. China wanted us to basically, you know, give them something more. Give them, you know, a, like a horticulture commodities should be good uh, for them, right? Who should be more in number for them so that they also feel that, okay, if they have invested in us, they have not wasted. So these horticultural crops include fruits, vegetables, medicinal uh, goods, you know, ornamental uh, plants and all these, these crops that were very important for dietary nutritional components and sources of medicines. So they thought that, you know, maybe we're going to get these from Pakistan due to their abundance and resources. But what's happening? They have invested. Now they're also pulling out their investments, right? Because they know that there's nothing, nothing feasible here. There's no system. Nothing's going on correctly. Then we have high inflation rate. So lower levels of investment in economic growth. High inflation rate means that everything is getting super expensive, right? So there are lower levels of investment, there are lower levels of economic growth. And what's happening? Everything is very, because uh, everything is in less quantity, so the demand has increased. And there's demand pull inflation that when there, you have more demand of any, you know, commodity, the the price of that commodity also increases, which means that there is a high inflation rate in that circumstances. So the lower levels of investment means, uh, you know, there's low economic growth, exports relatively are more costly, and, um, you know, you, you need to make sure that you have to do something in order to make sure that your inflation has been controlled. But there's nothing that, uh, that you know, the government of Pakistan can understand. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of... Uh, you know, you can say 
stagnant inf- investment in economic growth that, that's going on and disturb borrowing and lending decisions so basically high inflation rate obviously is going to disturb borrowing and lending decisions because you don't know if you're going to borrow at you know if you're going to borrow from us if you're just an example if you're going to borrow from china you know that the inflation rate is so high you have to borrow a lot of money in comparison to the money that you could have borrowed earlier when there was the inflation rate was less right so this is something which is very very crucial that exports relatively more costly people are not taking your exports why because they are they are the sorry the price of these exports has tremendously increased and now the inflation rate is causing exports to be expensive as well so why would other countries buy it from you people right they won't buy it from pakistan then we have depreciation of the pakistani rupee all right moving on depreciation of the pakistani rupee pressure on already high import prices of crude and raw materials reducing the purchasing power of people and causing inflation so depreciation of pakistani rupee i don't know if you will follow the news or not but every day pakistani rupee is depreciating tremendously significantly it's it's you know it's crazy how the pakistani rupee is decreasing in value how the purchasing power of people is decreasing how which is, how it's causing inflation because obviously when the purchasing power has been decreased and your currency is super weak it means that you are having inflation in the country right there's there's pressure on already high import prices of crude and raw materials you already have pressure to get these crude and raw materials uh, uh, you know but you can't do anything because the prices are of imports are too much and your currency's purchasing power is decreasing every day so it means that you have to pay more money in order to get those uh, you know raw materials and crude oil for yourself for your country so that's what pakistan is facing and depreciation is increasing with you know you can say it it's crazily increasing in pakistan every with every passing day then we have all right sorry so um then we have limited sources of foreign exchange again exports of manufactured goods remittances from overseas there are always two ways uh, one of the two crucial ways to get uh, you know basically to get the foreign exchange one is exports of manufactured goods second is remittance from overseas so once you're going to export uh, if you're trying to export such high priced goods no one is going to purchase them right no one is going to purchase because they know that it's going to be too uh, you can say expensive for them and that means less remittance then covid-19 pandemic gdp growth rate reversed uh, millions of citizens fell below the poverty lines so due to covid-19 jobs were not there employ- unemployment increased significantly gdp growth which is gross domestic uh, per capita has also you know reversed and millions of citizens uh, have uh, are falling below poverty line due to g- gross domestic product that is being reversed right gdp is gross domestic product then we have rising gross cost of global warming uh, sorry global borrowing so with global borrowing debt situation has deteriorated uh, recently you're just taking debts you're just trying to get from people and all these things right so global debt has reached record of 303 trillion people so the total record is 303 trillion global debt has reached a record for pakistan 303 trillion uh, you know for it has contributed to the global debt and debt situation has is worsening now i'm going to show you what people usually say for pakistan a, a normal person who is selling 